Today on this 2015 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, we're going to review and install Hawkins Custom Taillight Wiring Kit for towed vehicles, part number HM56200. Alright, this is what the wire harness looks like when it's installed in our Jeep. You can see it has its built-in bracket here and a four-pole cover for the four-pole. Now, there's not, not much to see on this because everything else is installed inside the vehicle. Next, we'll go ahead and show you all the parts that come with the kit. This is our main wire harness right here, with the diodes and the converter, and you get two T connectors. This one T connector with the green wire will go off to the passenger side, and this T connector with the yellow wire will go off to the driver's side. These are designed to match up with the factory connection points behind the taillights. A little closer look at our converter here. What happens is that our input from our four pole wiring harness from the RV goes into here, then in turn sends the signal out to the T connectors and to your taillights. So when this is applied to the vehicle, this only sends uh, power out to the taillights. This in turn prevents power going through the rest of the vehicle. It only keeps it at the taillights. Closer look at our four pole wire harness. It's a very long harness here. It will be more than enough for our Jeep application. Four pole flat. We got the three wires here. You notice the white wire is a lot shorter. That's intended to be grounded at the front of a vehicle. To our four pole, we have a cap that can be added to it. Just slips over the top. Some dielectric grease to protect the contacts when it's not being used. And also, there's a holder for the four pole flat so you can screw this to the bottom of your bumper or wherever you're having to have it installed. Okay. Lastly, self tapping screw for your ground wire. And also, some zip ties to help secure the wires when it's underneath the vehicle. Now, chances are you may run out of zip ties, so it's always a good idea to get some extras. Alright, next we'll go ahead and show you how we'll install this wire harness on our Jeep. We'll start off by removing the taillights on our Jeep. We're going to remove these two screws using a Phillips head screwdriver. Looks a little confusing because there's a couple of connectors here. We want a connection point that goes directly into the taillight bulbs here and here. So let's trace these back to this connector. We'll push down this tab and pull it apart. Now we'll go ahead and do the same process over on our passenger side. Okay, behind our passenger side taillight, same thing applies. Push down the tab and pull it apart. Now we go ahead and start working with the wire harness. I want to take the four pole end and the wire and the route through the opening here. And if you follow the lines or a gas tank line, just below it there's an opening. We can run it right through there and out the bottom. Now all this is just a, a foam pad. So if you need to pull it out and give yourself some more room, you can. Now we're going to do the same thing with the T connector with the green wire. So we'll take this T connector, plug it into the matching connection point until it clicks. Next we'll go ahead and take the other half and plug it together. So we have our circuit completed. Okay. Now next we'll go ahead and secure our converter. I'm just going to simply just bundle up the wires, hide it behind the converter, and I'm going to use a longer zip tie than, than what comes with the kit, and I'm going to zip tie it right to the harness. So now at this point, we can go ahead and put everything back inside and reinstall the taillight. Let's go ahead and take this T connector and we'll route it over the frame, follow the factory wire harness for a four pole for a trailer hitch, and continue on over to the other side and back up over the frame. Once I get past the factory fire, wire harness or a four pole, and we'll switch out to some longer zip ties and keep our wires as high as possible. Next, we gotta remove a panel underneath the taillight. Now on the inside, it's covered up with some foam insulation, so you may have to peel back a little bit of that to get a little bit easier access to it. And we're gonna take the, uh, my mallet and with just the wooden handle part, I'm just going to use that to push up on that plastic piece there until you pop it loose. 
We'll go ahead and get it held in position. And on this side here, we'll go ahead and put a small notch in it for the wires. Now I'm just gonna use a rotary tool to grind out a small section. With the notch made, we'll go ahead and take a wire harness and push it up from the bottom and out the top. We're gonna put this cap back in place with our wires routed through. All right, now let's go ahead and plug our T-connector into the factory wire harness. We'll let that sit for now. I want to take the rest of my wires, I'm going to bundle them up and zip tie them to the factory wiring harness. Cross some of our excess zip tie. We'll plug this back into our taillight and our taillight can go back inside. Next up is our four pole wire harness. We'll go ahead and route that towards the front of the vehicle. Now when we do that, we want to make sure we stay away from anything moving like suspension components or anything hot like the exhaust. Okay, it's a bit hard to see, but I took my four pole wire harness, ran it, started from the opening underneath the taillight, ran across the top of the frame, ran it over the cross members, I'll pull it out so you can see it, ran it over the top of the cross members, and just stayed over all the lines and the other cross members following the brake lines all the way up towards the front till about right here where I went over the frame and stayed on the outside of the frame until I went up to the fender well and ran straight up. Once I got up to the top here and ran it down towards the front, I took my excess wire and bundled it up right here. Sometimes your uh, supplemental braking system needs access to these wires, so it's always a good idea to keep them handy if you ever need them. We ran our wires along the washer fluid bottle along the front here, guided it, zip tied it wherever we could, and there's a small opening right here. You have to go kind of angle. It's a tight fit for a four pole to fit through, but we ran it through here behind the grill and then down towards the bottom. Now we can hide some of our wire right here behind this panel. We'll go ahead and use a trim panel tool to open these up. And let's put the panel back in place. After we ran our wire down below the grill, it's pretty wide open underneath there, and we just slipped our wire beneath the plastic fascia here. I removed one of the uh, plastic rivets, which is really easy. Just pull out the center, and it comes apart. Then you just simply pry it down, pull your wire, and your four pull through. After we have it pulled through, we can go ahead and put the plastic rivets back into place. We pulled out this plastic rivet here, and this one here to make it easy. Here's our ground wire, and this piece of metal right here is connected directly to the frame, so we can ground right to this. We use a self-tapping screw that comes with the kit, along with a quarter-inch nut driver. Now I'll go ahead and mount the four-pole end to the bumper on the Jeep. We'll use the holder and the four-pole cover. We'll put the cover on first. Now the cover will fit into a groove. We'll put it onto one half. Make sure the, the cover here goes into this little groove right here made for it. And we'll push it together. And we'll squeeze it together. There's a little a couple of pins and there's a friction fit that'll help hold it in place. We'll take up some of the slack. Put it where we want it. Now you use personal preference. You may want to put it off to one side or the other. In this case, I'm just going to be putting it in the center right here. So I'll take the long screws that come with it. I'll run through these oval slots and into our bumper. Now we'll need a Phillips head screwdriver for this. One of the last things to do for our install is go ahead and take the cover off and use some of the dielectric grease that comes with the kit to help protect the contacts. Okay, with everything hooked up, we'll go ahead and try it out. Now you wanna go ahead and plug this up to your RV and make sure everything works. I don't have an RV with me right now, so I'll just go ahead and apply power on my own and I can demonstrate how it works. So you'll take your four pole wire harness from your RV and plug it in. And we'll go ahead and check the lights in the back. First, we'll go ahead and try out the running light circuit and see how the tail lights come on. I'll turn those off. Next, we'll try the right turn signal. And now we'll go ahead and try the left turn signal. Now a brake signal uses the same signal as turn signals, so we know that's good since both turn signals work. 
And now finish it for Hopkins Custom Taillight Wiring Kit for towed vehicles. Part number HM56200 on this 2015 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited.